All right, it's my favorite part and everybody else's favorite part. Cutting all this crap out of there. A lot of people say demilling. I even catch myself saying it from time to time. I understand why. It's just the easiest thing to say, but technically, a civilian doesn't demill any firearm. Period. Demilling is short for demilitarized, but that's just being kind of anal. If you want to say demilled, knock yourself out. Take it apart. That's what we're talking about. I kind of like it better when the kits come. Everything's already been taken apart. I'm a little on the lazy side sometimes. <laughs> Cause these are a pain in the butt to get out because they're so close here you end up running your drill sometimes if you're not careful bumping in i mean you're going to finish work and you know, whatever some people like to use keep the, the patina you may say the actual ruggedness and the wear and all that finish wear on it which is kind of cool and we'll get this done right quick it all apart I'm not really going to show it on camera you guys have seen me and other home builders take these things apart it's long it's boring it's kind of tedious and these are a real pain in the butt I mean I don't know what it is about the rivets on these but I could not get those to pop off their heart I think one popped off and the other three just kind of split in half that one popped off and this was all bent up I had to go spend a lot of time tweaking it to get it flat again to fit on a receiver flat. I'm not showing a bunch of that stuff because uh, you can watch the other videos of myself or other builders doing it. So that's done. Now about ready to start spot welding the rails in. Got a 1564 drill bit here. It usually works real good. Of course, you'll use whatever diameter works good by just looking down inside of there and making sure that the locking lug here is level with this when you look through the hole. Get it as close as you can. One of the best things I've found to clamp them down with has been these uh, vice grips that are for going on strip bolts, or excuse me, strip, well, I guess strip bolt or strip nuts. It's got just the right kind of curve to just reach right inside of there, miss everything, and then clamp her down. I want you to make sure you don't have it too tight. You don't want to crush anything, you just want to hold it in place. And you can look down inside of there and make sure everything's level. I usually like to slide the drill out if you can. Makes it a lot easier. And then you can look down inside of there and make sure that it's all level. And then you're ready to spot weld. All right, that rails in. So a little welds here. Still kind of warm. Now I got to do this side. All right, that side's done. All right, the rails are welded in. But now it your rails will cover up your center support hole. So now I got to re-drill that. And we're going to use the uh, receiver blank jig here from AK Builder. And I'll go Pop that hole in there right quick on both sides. And be ready to rock and roll. Start putting this thing together. Of course, actually, I need to take it to work and mill everything. Mag stabilizers, rails. Well, I'm going to do this right quick. All right, we got it drilled. 
both sides. The only thing is, is I forgot that the trigger pin, or excuse me, the hammer pin hole right here is covered up. Oops, i to do that right quick. All right, got the pins installed. See there. Work just fine. Stick out both sides just a little bit. I like it when they stick out just a hair or at least flush. I, I hate it when they're inside a little bit because there is not much room left in there for those things to sit. Of course this this one has the extra section inside of there. But that works. So now I'm pretty much at a standstill until I can get back up to work, mill everything, get it all fit. So that's where we're at now. All right, normally I go up to the shop and trim these rails. This is an 80 percenter Polish Tanto blank. A lot of people build uh, AK-74s off of these, but this selector detent here it actually puts tension on your selector switch or lever. It's 200 thousandths farther down than a typical AK-74. You can still do it. People do it all the time. But seeing as how my kit's actually a Tantal kit, this wouldn't be a big deal. But I got this for a backup because I've been having problems heat treating and it, I thought it was the actual material. In a way it was, but it was my processes. I had the wrong material. This is not 8620. Nobody really knows what these are. We're thinking they're closer to uh, whatever the, the Russians called, well we call it still 50 anyway. It does well with uh, oil quench with all the right times and temps that I've been using. And this flat that I did from AK Builder, which worked, it was successful. It, it worked with uh, water quenching, same times and temps. But normally I have to trim the rails. Now that I got that in there, I won't be able to get it out. Oh, there it goes. You know, so on uh, AK Builder website, it says that their flats, the rails, or these top rails, are already CNC trimmed and everything. Typically, I you can look at the difference between them. I don't know if you can see that or not. Should be able to. There's a glare on there. I know from this one, it's so shiny. Normally, I have to take it to work, and I take a mill and the end mill, and I run down back and forth and get everything, the carrier and everything, to fit. But you don't have to do that with these blanks. I found out this is the first time I've ever used blanks. I've always used well the flats. Excuse me. I've used these blanks. The first time these, I've got this to successfully do right, and it was my problem. It wasn't, it wasn't AK Builder. It was me. And, but the carrier fits right in there. I've got it bolted, so it might be slightly forward. That's why it doesn't fit right dead in there, perfect. I don't have to trim anything there other than and get that to come out. The ejector. The only thing I'm going to have to trim as far as the top part here goes. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to do the mag stabilizers. Here's the magazine. It will not go up in there. It actually, if you can tell, it bumps. And these things is what give you your mag wobble. If you take too much material off here, you get mag wobble. A lot of people like to think that, well, the wasers are junk because they don't have a dimple in them, and that's why there's mag wobble. Well, let me show you something right quick. Magazine's in there. Look at how much room there is in between all that. Those dimples have absolutely nothing, and I mean nothing, to do with the magazine. They're just there to make this part to keep it from caving in too easily. That's all those dimples are for. And the washers were using a single stack mag, so there was more material in here, and then they just welded a plate in there with the little lips on it like the mag stabilizers in here, and that's what gave it enough thickness that it didn't have to worry about crushing this as easily. But that's all, all the reason dimples are there, is to keep the mag well from crushing in. 
It's just to make it more rigid. It has absolutely nothing to do with this, as you saw with the giant gap in there. Look at that. It's not even touching either side. <laughs> so stop worrying about dimples. I mean, it, look, it looks like, yeah, that's what they're supposed to have in it. But don't worry about that. That has nothing to do with the magazine. But now all I gotta do is go to work, trim these. I can do this by hand. Well, not by hand, obviously, but with hand one of these. So that's it. Now you can trim these with a Dremel. You don't, you don't have to have a mill. I have excess ones, so I like to do it because I know they're gonna be perfectly straight. And you don't have the magazine canted this way or that way or whatever. And if it's canted a little bit, eh, it ain't going back. You can go to Harbor Freight or someplace and get cheapies. These aren't the cheapies, but these are, well, I'll take that back. These actually maybe, yeah, these are the cheapies. Eh! Thought they were my Mitchie Toyos. Oh, well. Anyway, doesn't matter. You can use these. You can go get some plastic ones, whatever. Just keep uh, checking these. Typically, the side with the ejector, since it's thicker material, this will be thicker than this side. Just kind of work it, get them even as best you can, because you don't want your magazine canted one side or the other. To be honest with you, it won't make a damn bit of difference. Obviously, you don't want it. It's not going to sit in there like that, obviously, but you know. But just keep them close, keep eyeballing it, take just a little bit off, keep checking until you get everything the way you want it. And remember, a little bit loose is way better than extremely tight. Extremely tight is going to make it really hard to get that magazine in there because you're going to have to be perfect. If you're slightly off this way or that way under pressure or whatever and you're trying to get that magazine in there, you can forget it. It's not going to go in. Just a little bit of slop, in my opinion, is the best thing to do because it will, it will help guide it and rock it right up inside of there. And these magazines on these guns, like everything else, they can wiggle a little bit and everything will still work correctly. We're that much closer.